China's new J-50 stealth jet is not only real, it is already in the air. And the moment the first clear images appeared, one question spread fast inside the defense world. Could this jet threaten the fighter Lockheed is building next? The jet exposes a gap in the 6th gen race. The world expected China to copy. Instead, it leaped ahead with a design that even the US considers incredibly hard to pull off. This was not supposed to happen yet. The J-50 does not look like the fighters we all know. It has no tails, no cleave stabilizers, and a wing shape that only a few countries dare to test. Yet it is flying, not in a wind tunnel, not in a lab, in open air, with chase jets behind it. Analysts did not expect China to reach this point so soon. So what's so special about this aircraft? Why does its shape matter so much? And why are experts saying it puts pressure on Lockheed before the next US fighter even rolls out of the hangar? Here is where things get even more strange. The J-50 is part of a pair. China revealed two tailless jets at once, each built by a different company. One is the heavy J-36. The other is this smaller, sharper J-50. And both showed up years before most Western planners expected any flying 6th gen shapes. That sudden leap is why the J-50 is not seen as a simple prototype. It is treated as a warning, a sign that China may be shaping the next stage of air combat faster than Lockheed or anyone else predicted. But the real story begins with the shape itself. How does a tailless jet even stay stable? Why does this design scare engineers who know what it takes to make such a machine fly? And why did China choose this moment to bring it into the open? Let's break down the first clue. The shape that should not work, yet somehow does. The shock began with a few photos taken over China in late 2024. A J-16 chase jet flew beside a strange new aircraft that looked flat, wide, and almost unfinished. Its nose boom confirmed it was in early testing. Its landing gear was down. But the real surprise was the shape. No vertical tails at all. A clean upper surface. A body that blended into the wings like a single piece. At first, analysts thought it might be a drone. China has many experimental unmanned jets, and most of them show up in low-quality images before they get named. But a closer look changed everything. The J-50 had the size and proportions of a crude fighter. And the more pictures appeared, the clearer it became. This was not a drone test. This was a full next-generation manned fighter prototype. What caught the world off guard even more was timing. The US NGAD fighter is still hidden behind classified walls. Europe's FCAS and GCAP programs are still building mock-ups. None of these have public flight photos. China, on the other hand, now had two tailless jets flying at the same time. The heavy J-36 from Chengdu and the smaller J-50 from Shenyang both appeared on the very same day. Both showed control surfaces and test gear that matched real development stages. This meant Lockheed could no longer assume the US would define the next fighter generation. This was not a leak by accident. It happened on December 26th, a date linked to the anniversary of Mao Zedong's birth. The timing was symbolic, but also bold. China was signaling that it had entered a new level of fighter design. It went from copying past shapes to testing some of the hardest forms known in aviation. As the weeks passed, clearer images began to surface. Analysts spotted divertilous intakes, side weapon bays, a chin area shape for an electro-optical system, and rectangular exhaust that pointed to thrust vectoring. Each detail match features you expect in a true next-gen platform, not an early concept. By January 2025, Major defense outlets were publishing long breakdowns. The war zone, Yanes, and Aviation Line all noted the same thing. China was not experimenting. China was flying. And that difference, more than anything, is what made Lockheed planners sit up. They were watching a rival show the world its A-frame progress, while their own next fighter remained behind closed doors. But this reveal was only the start. The deeper threat is hidden in the shape itself a design that most engineers avoid because it works only if everything else, from software to thrust control, is near perfect. And that brings us to the next piece of the puzzle, the shape that breaks the normal rules of flight. The J-50 stands out the moment you see it. Most fighters have vertical tails that act like steering fins. They keep the jet stable, help it turn cleanly, and prevent it from sliding sideways through the air. The J-50 removes all of that. It has no tails, no fins, and no clear stabilizers. For many engineers, this is the point where you would normally stop and redesign the aircraft. A tailless shape is unstable by default. It wants to wobble, slip, or roll even in calm air. Making it fly is one thing. Making it fight is something else entirely. 
So why would China choose a design that is this difficult to control? Because removing those surfaces also removes some of the biggest radar targets on a jet. Every flat panel or upright fin reflects radar energy back toward the source. When you remove them, you reduce the radar profile and make the jet harder to detect across more frequencies. Only a small group of countries even tries this kind of design, and usually only after decades of research. The J-50 uses a lambda wing, which blends the main wings smoothly into the body. This gives the aircraft a wide, clean upper surface with very few sharp edges. That smooth shaping helps scatter radar waves instead of returning them toward a radar dish. The wing also produces strong lift at high angles, which is important for a fighter that lacks the usual tail surfaces to help with control. This wing style takes a long time to perfect, and its use here suggests that China has been working on this idea behind the scenes for years. One of the most unusual parts of the J-50 is its movable wingtips. These tips can angle up or down to help control pitch and roll. On a normal jet, the tail and other surfaces handle this job. On the J-50, the wingtips take on much of that effort. The amount of movement seen in test photos suggests that the aircraft relies heavily on rapid, precise adjustments. This means the flight control system must be strong, fast, and highly automated. If the computer hesitates even for a moment, the jet could lose stability. The intakes also reveal how much thought went into the design. They use a divertilis bump that pushes airflow into the engines without the extra part seen on older fighters. These bumps help hide the engine fans, which are a major radar target. This choice shows that the engineers were working towards stealth advantages that go well beyond simple shaping. At the rear, the rectangular exhaust point to thrust vectoring. By shifting the direction of the exhaust flow, the engines can help steer the jet. This is critical when the aircraft has no tail surfaces to fall back on during sharp turns or high-angle maneuvers. All of these elements, wing shaping, movable tips, intake design, and vectoring, come together to tell a clear story. The J-50 is not a risky experiment thrown together for show. It is a serious attempt at mastering one of the hardest layouts in modern fighter design. And if China gets this shape right, it gains a tool that could change how air combat works far from its own coast. Let's move to the next layer. Why this jet puts pressure on Lockheed before their own fighter is even shown to the world. For years, Lockheed held a clear lead in fighter design. The F-22 changed the standard for air combat, and the F-35 spread across Allied fleets worldwide. NGAD was planned as the next big step, built to secure air dominance well into the future. Then China flew the J-50. And what shook Lockheed was not that China revealed a new jet. It was the fact that China revealed a tailless prototype in open air while the United States had yet to show a single public image of its own next-generation aircraft. In a field where secrecy is normal, the first side to display real flight hardware gains momentum and confidence. This shock grew when analysts realized China had rolled out two separate aircraft at the same time. The heavy J-36 and the smaller J-50 were both captured in flight with chase jets. Two companies, two designs, both airborne. No other nation has shown dual next-gen prototypes like this. Even if the US is a working NGAD, China is the only country giving the public a look at what it is actually flying. That visibility shift matters. When one side shows progress and the other remains silent, people start to assume one is moving faster. That perception has weight, especially when China's aviation history once focused on copying foreign jets. Now it appears to be shaping the future instead of trailing behind. For Lockheed, the risk was not losing a race. The risk was losing the narrative. There is also a structural problem for Lockheed. The J-50 looks like the lower half of a planned high-low fighter mix. The J-36 would take the long-range command and strike role. The J-50 would be the more common A superiority jet. This means China is not only building a fighter, it is building a system. And Lockheed knows that systems, not single aircraft, decide wars. A final concern is China's rapid test tempo. Within months, New photos showed a second J-50 prototype without the early test boom. That signals confidence in stability, software, and flight control progress. It also suggests that China is not slowing down. For Lockheed, that creates one difficult question. If China is showing this much in public, how much more has it already solved out of sight? The J-50 is already a bold design, but what makes it even more concerning is how much of it remains unknown. China has allowed only small pieces of information to surface, and each new image raises more questions than answers. This controlled silence is part of what worries analysts and puts extra pressure on Lockheed. One of the first clues came from a simple detail. 
During the earliest flights, the J-50 carried a long A data boom on its nose, the kind normally used for collecting speed and airflow data. But in later images, the boom was missing. At first, people assumed they were looking at a different prototype. But more photos showed the same jet without the device. That change sparked debate. Did China remove it because the jet had moved past early testing, or because it was trying out a new internal sensor system that does not rely on a physical probe? No one knows for sure, but the absence of the boom showed that the aircraft was evolving quickly. The engine is another mystery. Analysts cannot confirm whether the J-50 is running on an improved WS-10-class engine or an early version of a newer model. Without clear data, experts have to rely on estimates from exhaust shape, heat patterns, and flight behavior. China has given no official information, and this silence forces outsiders to prepare for multiple possibilities, including versions with stronger engines in the future. The sensor layout also leaves gaps. The chin area appears shaped for an electro-optical system, and the side bays look large enough for air-to-air -air missiles. But no one knows the exact range or linking abilities of the sensors, or whether future variants will carry new equipment. Even the testing location raises questions. Satellite images suggest the J-50 has been seen near remote bases linked to sensitive programs. These sites are used only for high-priority projects. Moving the J-50 there signals how seriously China is taking it. And then there is the name. China has not confirmed J-50 at all. The aircraft has no public designation. By staying silent, China avoids sharing timelines, missions, or goals. It can change course at any time without public pressure. China reveals progress only when it benefits them and hides everything that matters most. All these unknowns create the same challenge. Lockheed cannot know how far ahead China is, so it has to plan for the worst-case version of the J-50, not the best-case one. The J-50 is not just another test jet. It is part of a larger shift. China is building aircraft, drones, and support systems together, not one piece at a time. And the J-50 fits right into that plan. It appears built to work with loyal wingman drones, long-range sensors, and the heavy J-36, forming a network that can cover huge stretches of the Pacific. That alone forces Lockheed to rethink how NGAD will operate. The concern is not that the J-50 is perfect today. The concern is that China is improving it at a steady pace while revealing only what it wants others to see. Every new photo shows a small step forward. New surfaces, cleaner shaping, a missing test boom, signs that software and stability systems are moving from early testing into something more mature. For Lockheed, that pace is a problem. NGAD is still hidden. Its timeline is unclear. Its test flight details are classified. Meanwhile, China is shaping the public view of the sixth gen race. The side that shows real aircraft in the sky shapes the global story, and China is using that advantage well. But the real tension comes from what no one can see. The engines, the sensors, the future variants, the full mission profile. If China is willing to show this much in daylight, what is happening inside the closed hangars and remote test ranges that never reach the public eye? If the J-50 is already in the air, already improving, and already shaping the next stage of the rivalry, then the real story is not what China has built right now. If the J-50 is only the first step, what comes next may not stay in the shadows for long. What will they reveal next?